Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship 2020 semi-finals. We know already that Hikaru Nakamura won first uh, semi-final against Wesley So and now Magnus Carlsen is going to play against Maxime Vachel Lagraffe. What happened in the first round that was incredible? Magnus Carlsen won first two games in the five minutes control, so nothing fancy here, but then Maxime Vachel Lagraffe equalize so it was 2-2 um, Maxim Vachelagraf started to build the confidence uh, and then he won this uh, 90 minutes section of the uh, match four and a half to three and a half so he was winning then we had the three minute section with the one second incrementation and again uh, mvl started to win four and a half to three and a half so at the end of two and a half hours a uh, two first section he was leading by two points two whole points and after three games after three games of the bullet where we have one minute and one second incrementation mvl was winning two and a half to half so four points ahead 12 minutes to the end and magnus carlsen has to win and uh, also mvl could just delay the games he cannot delay the games the start of the games but he could delay by for example make the repetition uh think too long time uh, if he have already the drone position and so on uh, however he didn't do that fair play and magnus carlsen started to catch up so 12 minutes to the to the end and and he has to catch up four points and he delivered three one games so it was one point ahead and mvl was in very very you know under huge pressure he was leading by, by four points now is only one point and magnus carlsen has to win this is the last game and i would like to show you this game full of emotions uh, Magnus Carlsen, if he gonna win this game, then we gonna have another game, uh, tie breaks, and then who gonna advance to the final, uh, gonna be decisive. So a lot of, a lot of emotions. So without further ado, let's see what happened in this game. Maxim Vasilagraf starts with the white pieces. We have e4, g6. So modern defense on the board, bishop g7. We have knight c3. We have d6, knight f3. So uh, two knights variation. And now knight f6, of course, is the main idea. However, we have a6 by Magnus Carlsen. As always, he tries to deviate somehow uh, here and there. We have bishop e3 and now b5. So bishop b seven is the one of the ideas here bishop d3 creating this a very very classical center very strong center we have knight d7 we have a castle we have c5 attacking the central pawn d takes on c5 d takes on c5 uh, and now we have e5 so now the idea is to actually sacrifice the pawn uh, however it's not really sacrifice because the pawn yes can be won but this knight is defending c5 so at the end this knight can be taken so for example knight e5 knight e5 bishop e5 first bishop e4 try to exchange the queens and if black doesn't want to uh, lose the tempo then of course um, queen d1 rook a to d1 now there is the the move uh, for for black so rook b8 but after bishop c5 yes the game can continue uh, knight f6 and so on so as you see uh, the pawn is not not lost and everything is fine with this position both of the sides uh, can of course play it but white have the advantage uh, control the the center control the uh, the open file the only open file so much easier game and if you say okay but uh black actually can sacrifice pair of bishops and double the pawns it's not the case uh, here because now white have very beautiful bishop c6 so that would not be possible uh because now black would be in the troubles and white would actually win the exchange here so for example king g7 and now uh, only now b takes on c3 uh, and now look at this the rook cannot move anywhere uh, white actually controls a lot of squares here uh, also the bishop cannot be moved because the, the rook is hanging and so on so uh, knight f6 probably 
and then exchanging and after bishop a7 this rook is uh is lost i mean exchange is lost so bishop b7 and of course white have extra exchange should uh, easily win the game uh so this is why we have bishop b7 by magnus carlsen he doesn't care about this pawn and then very typical sacrifice on the e6 uh, and now doubling the pawn on the on the e file so we have f takes on e6 and now immediately knight g5 a uh, very serious threat because knight e6 is coming with the attack on the queen and also on the bishop um, and the queen cannot move just to defend the bishop so now black are in troubles also there is another variation here and this pawn can be taken and if the rook takes and then of course the bishop can take on g6 with check and with the attack on the rook so very typical um attack so this is why we have bishop c3 first uh, b takes on c3 and now queen b6 defending and the e6 of course h7 cannot be defend however i'm not sure if maxim vasheri lagraf would like to win this pawn it's nothing wrong with this uh, except after the castle uh, the knight, knight have to go back to g5 and now black gonna have the attack on the on the h file open h file so yes white won the pawn however uh, this would be very very difficult dangerous and very risky and Maxim Vasheli Graf only needs a draw so much safer was to play c4 provoking the something to do with this pawn uh, but Magnus Carlsen doesn't care knight g2 f6 so he developed the pieces and now we have a4 saying okay I'm gonna push your pawn uh, this is why we have b4 uh, and now queen e2 uh, we have also knight e5 and bishop f4 attacking the knight so queen c6 first um, magnus doesn't care about the po the knight of course the knight is attacked twice so you cannot defend it uh, but first we have queen c6 threatening the checkmate uh, f3 and only now move the knight so we have knight d3 uh, and here if the queen takes then everything is fine with the position this pawn is still taking care of b3 but maxim vashela graf wanted to keep the tension on the e6 this is why he took with the pawn now the problem is that magnus actually got a very dangerous past pawn and it's protected past pawn uh, so very strong pawn uh, and this pawn is under attack twice again so we have bishop c8 now defending and now rook f to e1 attacking it even um, three times so we have h6 and now asking uh, maxim okay you want to get the pawn you have to do it now otherwise you have to move your um, knight uh, of course knight e6 could be played after knight e6 probably we, we would see um exchanging everything and we would have this position slightly better for white however it's uh, still very much playable by uh, both of the sides king f7 is coming of course a rook a to e1 and this pawn can be defended so no problem for example rook e7 and so on uh, however we have knight h3 so maxim says uh, magnus you are in the time troubles magnus uh, used a lot of time uh, in the game and maxim has at least 20 seconds is at least 20 seconds ahead in the time control uh, and now saying okay uh, i'm gonna make the situation more complicated i still go for the tricks in the interview after and uh, maxim said that his plan was to go for the tricks so he needs a lot of pieces uh, to actually go for the tricks we have g5 kicking the bishop bishop e5 pinning the knight this is why we have rook f8 and pinning and now knight f2 so bringing the the knight to the game uh, and from there the knight uh, for example can go, come to e4 uh, or g4 but of course it's not really convenient especially if the bishop and the queen can stay on this diagonal now we have a5 so magnus is also looking for some space for his uh, for his bishop also stabilizing this uh, pawn structure and now we have finally d4 so maxim said okay this was the backward pawn definitely uh, my weakness so get rid out of that uh, and here uh, magnus has his chance uh, he could play bishop a6 which would be very very tricky 
And for example, bishop f6, of course, uh, pawn cannot take because the queen can exchange the queens uh, and so on and win another pawn. So uh, rook f6 probably. And now it would be, maybe Magnus was scared about this one, d5. And the point is uh, that then we have even another attacker on the e6 pawn and this e6 pawn could be uh, very, very dangerous and very, very annoying. However, Magnus had here a queen d5. And this is very tricky because now c takes on uh, b5, b, e2, uh, and after rook, e2, Magnus would have the compensation for a lost piece at three connected past pawn would be very very powerful so he could try to go for bishop a6 immediately maybe he was afraid of this d5 move so first he plays c takes on d4 now we have a bishop d4 and only now bishop a6 but now we have a rook c1 and no problem this pawn actually is defended uh, so how to continue probably g4 would be the option for magnus try to actually do something with this pawn g4 would be uh, very very annoying especially after um, after exchanging so uh, white would have to i'm not sure what to play as white maybe knight g4 and after knight g4 f takes on g4 try to put some pressure here uh try to castle bring the rooks to the game and maybe this way uh maybe rook c2 and castle and so on uh however we have rook d8 now attacking the bishop and this is actually a uh, quite a mistake because uh, maxim had the chance here to play very strong move bishop f6 and bishop f6 now is very strong of course e takes on f6 cannot be played again because of the queen e6 now the queen is under attack so queen e6 and rook e6 wins the bishop and the game so uh, that was one of the options so probably rook f6 but then queen e5 is extremely strong first attacking this pawn uh, and also the knight can jump to g4 and um, there is the problem if you for example defend that pawn yes it's possible Possible, but then queen h8 and what you're gonna do uh, you cannot come with the with the king because you're gonna lose this rook for free together with the queen so you cannot rook f8 but then white gonna win this pawn then this pawn uh, and that should be enough to win the game and if you try to uh, defend this pawn and pin the knight, which looks very logical, uh, then we have something like c5, queen c6. And yes, this pawn is not in danger anymore. However, now the knight can uh, jump to g4. Uh, and if the rook goes, for example, to f8, we're gonna have queen g7. Uh, this pawn is under attack. There is queen g6 and so on. So, for example, rook d5, making some space for the king to escape, uh, that it cannot be attacked from the front uh, but then we're gonna have queen g6 and for example uh, it doesn't really matter uh, if if we win the, this exchange this way or another this is just one of the ways uh, of playing one of the lines uh, but white in all the variations actually gonna win at least the exchange uh, otherwise the king can be in there even in the mating net so uh, that was the option bishop f6 was very very promising here following by um, queen e5 however and maxim of course this is the bullet time control he just played very safe move bishop a1 and bishop of course is defended by both of the rooks uh, and here this is the last moment where magnus can actually play g4 and g4 is extremely annoying move first it's possible to open the g file and if knight g5 g4 again knight g4 and um, and f takes on g4 this rook can actually uh, attack the pawn on c4 not much can be done probably something like queen e6 queen e6 rook e6 and this bishop can come to c4 the bishop is defended of course and at the same time uh, attacking the rook so probably rook e3 but black can get a ton on his initiative now uh, rook d2 then rook f2 and also this protected past pawn probably gonna win the game so that was last chance of magnus carlsen to actually try to open this position a bit however he felt that this pawn is under attack is much more important now so he played king f7 but there is the huge problem because maxim Vashela Graf uh, simply uh, can make a lot of threat. So knight d4 and first of all he has the threat on the e5. So something has to be done. Uh, we're gonna have very beautiful fork 
uh, and the engine recommends actually don't care about this pawn go back with the with the king to e8 but magnus of course doesn't see what engine suggests here he went for king g8 and now the king it looks like it's very very safe however this bishop this ninja bishop on the uh, other side of the board is a very very strong now 95 with the attack on the queen so queen c5 with the check king h1 and now knight h5 so the knight of course is heading to f4 it looks like very very dangerous however maxim get all the initiative now so first we have knight g6 uh, attacking the rook rook f7 now also defending the pawn on e7 and now queen e6 so the pawn is attacked twice and the rook is pinned so we have queen d6 asking to exchange the queens magnus feels like okay this is too dangerous uh, but first we have knight e7 with check uh, we have queen e7 and now there is the very complicated but very promising uh, way of winning by Maxime Vachel Lagraf. he missed that uh, but queen g6 is extremely strong and if the king goes for example to f8 then first thing uh, we have the queen under attack uh, we have this pawn under attack with the check so can deliver the check first and so on and so probably knight uh, goes to g7 but then of course the the queen is lost and finally if rook g7 then simply queen h5 winning the piece the queen is under attack so probably queen d6 but then just exchange couple of pieces uh, and after a king h7 finally take this rook and after king g7 rook e1 and this king is in the troubles the rook can come uh, and together with the queen deliver the checkmate it's impossible actually to defend so so uh, that was possible. Queen g6 was winning easily, but Maxime Vachel Lagraf just wanted to simplify the position and he played queen e7. We have rook e7, rook e7. So uh, material is not equal. Magnus Carlsen is down the exchange. However, he still has this very dangerous uh, protected past pawn. We have knight f4 by Magnus and now rook a7 saying this uh, protected past pawn is too dangerous we have bishop c4 of course the bishop cannot be taken because of the checkmate so still very very tricky but maxim vachela graf didn't fall into that trap that would be disaster that is the, the last game and he played rook a5 and in this position magnus carlsen actually lost on time but not much he can do about that uh, he has a completely lost position and uh, whatever if he tries something the most active possible is of course he cannot win that game but if he tries something active rook d2 let's say maybe win this pawn maybe bring the bishop somehow uh, take the pawn f on f3 everything is too slow white can simply play h3 that's the first thing so uh the bishop now can be taken because there is no no checkmates yes we can exchange the bishops but it's uh, no purpose of that on that so probably bishop d5 uh but then we're gonna have rook a seven and there is the checkmate in the next move so the bishop have to be moved and then rook c to c7 and we're gonna have the checkmate together with the bishop it's impossible to defend black can deliver one check maybe and have to uh, retreat but it doesn't work because of rook h7 and we're gonna have the checkmate yes black can play something like rook d7 and there is no checkmate because the king can escape however of course is losing the rook uh, and the game white gonna have extra rook and um, that position was winning and um, anyway so maxim vachel lagraf shocking news uh managed to not lose last game uh, magnus had the streak of 3-1 games but not four and this is maxim vachel lagraf who actually gonna play against hikaru nakamura in the grand final so uh, maxim vachel lagraf 13 points and magnus carlsen 11 points it was very very exciting and now we are waiting for the for the grand final so if you don't want to miss uh, games from the grand final press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one